guys. Welcome to this uh, demo. This is Dr. Celso Ferrer from George Mason University. This demo is being recorded for our water resources engineering class. As per the request of our students that they thought that the older video wasn't that great. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better. We're going to go over watershed delineation and stream network delineation for our project here on campus. So the goal here is to identify a culvert here on campus that's going to be under design and we wanted to delineate the watershed and the stream network for it. We also wanted to look into average precipitation over the watershed and we also wanted to look into the land cover for the watershed for hydrologic design. So I started off with a DEM. I just loaded my DEM here. I changed the color so it looks a little bit nicer on screen. And I um, also wanted to remind you guys to check your extensions to make sure that spatial analyst is on. That's the number one mistake that people can get this uh, going. So I have my DEM here. I'm also going to add a base map. So if I add a base map, I'm going to go with topography, but you guys are welcome to choose whichever you want, just so we can get a better sense of location. And I also highly encourage you guys to start off with the DEM as the first layer you add to ArcMap. That way, we're sure to get the projections of our data frame, right? So you can see here that we're using meters as our horizontal units. And now we should be able to see George Mason University here. And I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to show you where our culvert is. So this is Braddock Road. This is the stream that drains out of campus. So here's our project location. So this is the place where we wanted to delineate this watershed from. So we're going to start off by creating the culvert point itself. And I'm also going to go ahead and delineate the watershed by hand just to get us a first glimpse of what our, our watershed should look like. So I'm going to use our catalog. And I'm going to zoom into my project folder. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to create a new folder here first. And I'm going to call it demo. And inside this folder, I'm going to have a new shape file, which will be a point shape file, which I'm going to call it cover. And make sure to remember to get the projections right. So I'm going to import the projections from our DEM. Therefore, everything is on the same projection. And OK, so I have my cover here. And I'm also going to create a new shape file, which I'm going to call WShed. That's our watershed. But it's be a point. This one it's a polygon. Remember that. And I'm going to import projections from my DM again. That way I have a culvert and a watershed that I just created. And never mind, I have several culverts and several watersheds throughout my folder suite because I'm repeating this demo again and again and again. So we're going to edit our culvert first. Well, actually, I'm going to go with the watershed first. So I'm going to edit features, start editing, and I'm going to add my watershed, and I'm going to create a watershed here going by hand. Now this map here, it's not the greatest map to delineate a watershed by hand, but it does give me some information about the stream network and where this watershed should be. I'm going to actually use our DEM as a base to create this watershed. So I can even see Braddock Road here out of my DM. This is a pretty good DM. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go ahead and look for the highest points in order to delineate this watershed. So here's my rough watershed delineation by hand. And you can see that I went a little off of the higher points here. So I probably went a little bit too much towards the other watershed here. So this area here, I don't think that's that great. But it's going to be good to illustrate the point of doing watershed by hand and automatic. So once I'm done, I can say save edit and I can stop editing here. And we should be able to calculate the area of this watershed right off the bat. And I'm going to use the calculate area tool. But there are several ways where you can get the area from this watershed. And I'm hoping that at this point you already went through the ArcGIS tutorials and you know how to do that in a different way. To do that. This should uh, allow us to see the watershed area. So here's our watershed area. And the units here should be in square meters because those are the units that we're working with. 
So we do have a watershed by hand. So we need to call it. So this is our watch. We're now going to use the spatial analyst hydrology toolbar. Here's my arc toolbox. If you don't see this on yours, you can always turn it on by clicking the arc toolbox tool here. And then we're going to look for a spatial analyst. And we're going to look for hydrology. And we are going to run the basic V8 algorithm tool. So we're going to run fill first. And we talked about why we might need fill from this DEM, which is a lighter based DEM, so there's a lot of details, and some cells will cause the D8 algorithm to fail because it was just draining inward, where it should be really draining outward. But remember, you've got to be careful how, by using fill, so you want to be very thoughtful about filling in sinks in a DEM. The next step here is the flow direction, so I'm going to move right to it and I'm going to get it going and make sure you use the fill as your input. Other thing to keep uh, track of is where you're saving your files and the names you're giving it to them. I'm just going with the default names for now to be able to quickly walk you through to you so it's not too boring. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is sometimes this processing takes a little longer depending on your computer, so let's see how it goes today. My flow direction result is here, and as we talked in class, we're running the DA algorithm to find the steepest lobe for each neighboring cell, for each cell here, and it's eight neighbors. And we want to make sure that we get eight directions out of this. If we get anything different, something went wrong, and it should not progress from here, otherwise nothing will work from now. The next thing we want to get here is our flow accumulation. So I'm going to run my flow accumulation to remove the one that takes a little longer normally. So flow direction. So it's going for it. And as you remember, we're now adding the flow direction as it drains downstream. So the flow accumulation should represent how many cells are draining to any given cell in this DEM. And we also talked about in class that the flow accumulation can also lead to the drainage area of any given cell by multiplying the flow accumulation number and the cell's area. In this case, I'm using a 1 meter DEM for our campus, so it's just a direct um, correlation with uh, the drainage. I'll let the flow accumulation run for a little bit, and if it takes too long, I'm just going to kill it, and I'm just going to bring it from some other demo we have, so we just don't need to sit and work with it. But this is actually a good time for you guys to talk with your group members, the one one of you that, you know, haven't met your group members, so try to ask what they do outside of class, what are their career plans, you know, start to build that engineering network as you wait for your flow accumulation. Alright, so I'm just going to kill it for now. It should work for you, no problem here. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to edit. I'm going to look for some previous demo. Probably what I did in class. Let me see if I can a flow accumulation here. Alright. So this is what you should get once your flow accumulation is done. And I can see here already the stream networks being formed in white. So the next step will be to create our watershed. So I have a DM and I have a base map here and we're going to now create our culvert. So I'm going to zoom in really close to our project area and we are going to, have to edit our culvert in order to add the culvert. So I'm going to start adding to my culvert and we're going to add my culvert and we're going to add a point right here. But I want you to be extra careful because we're delineating the watershed based on the DEM. And I highly recommend you to put this point at some point inside your flow accumulation drainage area. So that way we're sure to get the correct drainage area. So I'm going to place it inside my flow accumulation height value because this is where the water is draining through 
so we can actually calculate the drainage area. Save my edits, I'm gonna stop editing, and I'm gonna run the water structure. So it's asking me for my full direction, and it's asking me for my cover, and I'm gonna say go. This one shouldn't take too long, it's not too large of a watershed. So we're gonna wait for it to work. And if all goes well, and we've done everything right, we should be able to get our watershed next. Alright, so we have our watershed, I'm gonna zoom to our watershed. And there it is. So we now have both the hand delineated watershed and the automated delineated watershed. I'm going to also convert this raster to a polygon. That way we can compare the two watersheds a little bit. There they are. Now we have two rosters to look at. I'm going to make this one uh, with blue and blue so you can see it. So here are the two watersheds and you can follow the same procedure to get the area. And then you can compare these areas. You can see that this one picked up the high points here way better than the one I did around. So we're done. We have a watershed. We have a in the area now. The next step we want to do is to come up with our stream network. And for that we're going to use map algebra. And we're going to rely on raster calculator to do that. We're going to use a conditional statement where we're going to compare our flow accumulation cells. And I'm going to say flow accumulation greater than um, 10,000 for this case will give me one, zero otherwise. And I'm going to run the flow accumulation. And we should be able to map every cell in the flow accumulation that's greater than 10,000 and you can already see that I have here my stream network coming to life. So next I'm going to convert that on the raster to poly line this time the raster to poly line and there it is. should be able now to get a stream map. To make it a little neater, I'm also going to clip this. So I'm going to clip we want to clip the stream network based on our giving this new phone names, now I can keep track of what comes out. Alright, so we should have been done now. I'm going to remove this raster so you can see this a little better. I'm going to remove this one. So now we have the screen network only inside our watershed. Let's make this blue as well. So now we have our screen network and we have our watershed and we have our hand delineated watershed which I'm going to remove it from now because we like this one way better. And if I remove my DM, you should be able to have a good glimpse now of the drainage and the watershed for this point. So we're done with this part of the exercise. I also asked you on your project to try different thresholds so you can get a sense of the level of detail you can get in your stream network by choosing different uh, thresholds. You can also see that by filling our DM, we're just flowing through a missing point here with our screen now. Alright, so now we're going to go to precipitation. So, in your data set, I'm giving you guys the weather station here. So we're going to add the weather stations. Here they are. Let's make this bigger triangle so we can see them. I'm going to also label them based on the precipitation number itself. So instead of the ID, we want to see the station. Let's make it a little bigger so you guys can see it. Alright, so here are our five precipitation stations, and the number represents the amount of inches that we recorded for a given precipitation event. 
Now we want to use the two some polygons to calculate the average precipitation for the watershed. So we're going to search for two some polygons. Okay, two some polygons. How handy is that? And we're going to use the weather stations. And we want to do all fields because we really want to get the precipitation out of this. And make sure you check your environments under your processing extent. And you want to really see this for the entire uh, display. So I'm going to say go. And there they are. We got our two some polygons. Now, this is not yet related to the watershed, so we need to intersect. So we want to intersect our two some polygon. That one. And our watershed. Watershed here. Let's see what we got. Alright, we're good to go. Now we have two some polygons specifically inside our watershed. And if we check the, check the attribute table, we can see that we have the relative area for each station. And here's our precipitation value. So we can now, just like we did in class, relate the precipitation for each station with the percent area of the total area and we can calculate the average precipitation of this watershed. You can either do it here by adding a field or you just do it in Excel by hand, whichever way you like. But from here you can easily calculate your average precipitation in the watershed. That concludes part two. Part three is about checking out the land cover in the watershed. So we're going to add the land cover layer here and you can see that I can clearly define my watershed, my streams on top of this land cover. So what I want you guys to do is to check online the national land cover data set. And if you expand here, you can see that each color is associated with a number. And if you Google for the legend of the national land cover data set, you'll see that 23, for example, represents highly urbanized areas. And what we're looking for here is the percent of the each land cover type for the watershed. I'm not going to walk you through that because I want you to have a little bit of challenge in this tutorial. But on the tutorial guidelines, there are tips on how to go about calculating the percent area for this watershed. A couple of hints here is when you're choosing a base map, you can choose from several different layers. For example, we could have had used images so we could see an, an image in the background here. Here it is, so here's our campus, there's our drainage uh, culvert here, and there's our drainage area over the campus. But you could also have gone to data from ArcGIS online, and you can find different types of data from here, and we talked about that in class, and I highly encourage you guys to explore data from ArcGIS online on your tutorial. Lastly, but not leastly, I want to call your attention to our website so if you're not a Mason student and you're interested in repeating this um, tutorial you can come here to our website and under teaching and tutorials we have all this material available online to everyone we specifically walk through the basic space analysis for water sources engineering tutorial you can get the tutorial here the data here and actually the solutions here so no excuses you all should be able to wrap this up. Good luck finishing it and uh, let me know if you guys have some questions along the way.